Hey there, friends. I have my special guest today. What is this? It's a pig. I wonder why I have a pig with me today. Well, I also have a book with me today. And this is one of my favorite series. It's called Mercy Watson Thinks Like a Pig. Well, let's go ahead and read it. Chapter 1. Mr. Watson and Miss Watson have a pig named Mercy. Mr. Watson, Miss Watson, and Mercy live together in a house at 54 Dekawu Drive. One day, Mr. Watson and Miss Watson and Mercy were sitting on their patio. Mr. Watson and Miss Watson and Mercy were drinking lemonade. Mr. Watson said, Miss Watson, this lemonade makes my lips feel puckery. I put an awful lot of lemons in it, said Miss Watson. That explains it, said Mr. Watson. Mercy slurped some lemonade from her bowl. Isn't it a beautiful day, said Miss Watson. Absolutely beautiful, said Mr. Watson. Mercy grunted. Chapter 2 Next door to the Watsons, Baby Lincoln and Eugenia Lincoln were standing in their front yard. Baby, said Eugenia, we live next door to a pig. Yes, sister, said Baby, we do. But that does not stop us from living a gracious life, said Eugenia. It doesn't, said Baby. Eugenia handed Baby a shovel. What's this for? said Baby. We are going to beautify our yard. Eugenia said, We are going to plant pansies. You, Baby, will dig. And I, Eugenia, will plant. Yes, sister, said Baby. We will lead a gracious life, even if it kills us, said Eugenia Lincoln. Yes, sister. Baby sighed. She began to dig. Chapter 3. On the Watson's patio, Mercy put her snout up in the air. She sniffed. There was a delightful smell coming from next door. Mercy pushed her snout through the hedge. She looked into the Lincoln sister's yard. She saw Eugenia Lincoln put a flower in the ground. What was going on? Mercy waited until Eugenia disappeared around the corner. She pushed through the hedge and trotted into the Lincoln sisters' yard. She sniffed the flowers that Eugenia had planted. The flowers smelled delicious. Mercy took a bite. It tasted delicious too. Uh-oh. When she had eaten the whole flower, she looked up and saw another flower. She ate that one too. Mercy burped. She moved on to flower number three. Uh-oh. Chapter four. On the other side of the house, Eugenia Lincoln planted her last pansy. There, said Eugenia. It looks spectacular, doesn't it? It does, said Baby. I believe I will go around front and admire the overall effect, said Eugenia. Eugenia Lincoln went around front. What do you think happened? But there was no overall effect to admire. Baby! screamed Eugenia. Yes, sister, said Baby. Where have all the flowers gone? shouted Eugenia. Oh dear, said Baby. They were here just a minute ago. Mercy came around the corner. There was a spring in her step. There was pansy petals on her chin. Pig! shouted Eugenia. Pig, pig, pig! Eugenia Lincoln ran toward Mercy. Mercy kicked up her heels. She ran away from Eugenia. Uh oh. Chapter 5. Meanwhile, back on the Watsons' patio, the Watsons were wondering where Mercy had gone. She was here just a minute ago, said Miss Watson. 
She can't have gone far, said Mr. Watson. Mr. Watson and Miss Watson went looking for Mercy. Oh, said Miss Watson, there she is. And look, she's playing a game of tag with Eugenia. They look so happy. Is it really a game of tag? I don't think that sister is playing, said Baby. And I don't think that sister is happy. She's not, said Mr. Watson. No, said Baby, she's not. Mercy ate every one of sister's pansies. She must be hungry, said Miss Watson. Mercy, Miss Watson called. Come inside and have a little toast with a great deal of butter on it. Mercy came running. She came running quickly. Mercy loved toast. She particularly loved toast with a great deal of butter on it. Chapter six. Baby Lincoln was correct. Eugenia Lincoln was not happy. I have had it, said Eugenia. I have been pushed too far. Oh dear, said Baby. I'm ready to take extreme measures, said Eugenia Lincoln. Extreme measures, said Baby. I am calling animal control, said Eugenia. Oh, sister, no, said Baby. Oh, sister, yes, said Eugenia. She got out the phone book. She ran her finger down the page. Please, sister, said Baby. Eugenia stabbed a number with her finger. Here we go, she said. Oh, sister, please think about what you're doing, said Baby. I know exactly what I'm doing, said Eugenia. I am kissing that kit pig goodbye. Chapter seven. The phone rang at the animal control center. Animal control officer Francine Palute answered. Help you, said Francine Palute. Yes, said the voice on the other line and the line. I am calling to report an animal desperately in need of control. Got yourself a rabid dog, said Francine. Well, no, said the voice on the other end. Stray cat? Certainly not, said the voice. Raccoon in your trash? No. Squirrel in your chimney? I think not. Snake in your toilet? I beg your pardon? Let me think, said Francine. It's not a dog or a cat. It's not a raccoon or a squirrel and it's definitely not a snake. What could it be? Wait a minute, said Francine. You're not dealing with a skunk, are you? What I'm dealing with is a pig. A pig? A pig! Give me the address, said Francine. 54 Deckerwood Drive, said the voice. Hmm. Chapter eight. At 54 Deckerwood Drive, Mercy was on the couch taking an after toast nap. She was snoring. What a peaceful afternoon, said Miss Watson. Indeed, said Mr. Watson. Knock, knock, knock. Someone is at the back door, said Miss Watson. I'll get it, said Mr. Watson. He went to the kitchen. Come on in, baby, said Mr. Watson. I can't, said baby. Something terrible is going to happen. It is? In an um, unmentionable horror approaches. It does? Uh oh. Oh, Mr. Watson, said Baby Lincoln, you must protect her. Protect her, said Mr. Watson. Protect who? Baby threw herself into Mr. Watson's arms. She began to cry. There, there, said Mr. Watson. Miss Watson came into the kitchen. What is going on, she said. It seems an unmentionable horror is approaching, said Miss, Mr. Watson. Oh dear, said Miss Watson. I have always been terribly afraid of unmentionable horrors. What will we do? There, there, said Mr. Watson. I'm sure we will think of something. Chapter nine. Mercy was still on the living room couch. Knock, knock, knock. 
She opened one eye. Knock, knock, knock. Mercy opened both eyes. The Watson's front door swung open. Mercy, said Stella. We were having a tea party and you were invited. Mercy yawned. I don't think she's interested, said Frank. There will be a big pieces of cake and cream puffs and cheese toast, said Stella. Mercy sat up. Actually, she was interested. There will be pancakes and enchiladas, said Stella. Mercy was very interested. But, said Stella, if you come to the tea party, you have to wear a hat. Everybody at a proper tea party wears a hat. Mercy thought about hats. She thought about food. She got off the couch. She followed Frank and Stella out the front door. Chapter 10. Animal control officer Francine Palut was on her way to 54 Deca Wood Drive. Francine, she said to herself, you've never encountered a pig before. This is a career expanding opportunity. At the corner of Creek and Wingingo, Francine spotted a dog. She stopped the truck. Hello, little friend, said Francine Palute. Are you lost? Arf, said the dog. Just as I suspected, said Francine. No tags. Hop in. On Merkel Street, a golden retriever stepped right in front of animal control officer Francine Palute's truck. Tsk, tsk, said Francine Palute. Foolish dog. She stopped this truck. She got out. Quick little like, quick like a bunny, said Francine. Pollute to the golden retriever. She, the golden retriever hopped in. Francine, said Francine Pollute, you are the best animal control officer in the history of animal control. Nothing can stop you, not even a pig. Chapter 11. By the time Francine Pollute turned onto Deckawood Drive, her truck was full of dogs. To catch a pig, said Francine. What I need to do is think like a pig. The dogs in the back of the truck howled. Think like a pig, think like a pig, said Francine Pelou. She saw a man and a woman running down the street. Excuse me, said Francine. Have you seen a pig? We have lost her, said the woman. Lost who, said Francine. Mercy, said the man, our darling, our dear, she is in great danger. An unmentionable horror approaches, said the woman. An unmentionable horror, said Francine Pelou. Exactly, said the man. All righty then, said Francine. Thank you very much. She rolled up her window. You are on your own here, Francine, said Francine Pelou. The locals are as crazy as loons. The dogs in the back of the truck barked and growled. I know, I know, said Francine. Think like a pig. Chapter 12. Mercy was wearing a hat. She was watching Stella pour imaginary tea. She was watching Stella slice imaginary cake. Mercy was not having a good time. Where were the enchiladas and cream puffs? Mercy's stomach growled. Where were the pancakes? Would you like some more, said Stella. Some more of what? Mercy wondered. She snorted. Isn't this lovely, said Stella. I don't think Mercy is happy, said Frank. Everybody is always happy at a tea party, said Stella. I'm not happy, said Frank. I'm hungry. Plus, I look stupid in this hat. Oh, please, said Stella. Here, have some more cake. Chapter 13. Animal control officer Francine Pollute was scouting the backyards of Deca Wood Drive. She leaped over hedges. She crept through flower beds. She thought piggy thoughts. She climbed a tree and surveyed the yard below her. She saw three people wearing hats. 
she saw three people sitting at a table having tea. Isn't that nice, said Francie and Blue. Isn't that sweet? Francine looked more closely. Wait a minute, she said. One of those peoples is not a person. One of those people is a pig. Francine, you have located the pig. You are the best animal control officer in the history of the world. And now you must capture the pig on the count of three. One, two, Francine Pollute closed her eyes. She leaped from the tree. Three! Chapter 14. Mercy decided that she had had more than enough of nothing. She stood up. She was going home. Suddenly, there was a high-pitched yell. A woman fell from the sky and landed head first on the tea table. Stella screamed. Frank screamed louder. Mercy screamed loudest of all. One street over, Mr. Watson said to Miss Watson, Do you hear that? That is our darling, said Miss Watson. That is our dear, and she is in trouble. Mr. Watson and Miss Watson started to run. Chapter 15 Animal Control Officers Francine Pollute rolled off the table. She wrapped her arms around Mercy. Think like a pig said Francine. Mr. Watson and Miss Watson came running into the backyard. You found her, said Miss Watson. You are a hero, said Mr. Watson. You landed right directly on top of your head, said Frank. I do feel a little woozy, said Francine. Maybe you're just hungry, said Miss Watson. Maybe you need some toast. Toast, said Francine. Toast thought Mercy. These dogs look hungry too, said Miss Watson. Would you fellows like some toast? I wonder if this is a good idea, said Francine Pollute as she let the dogs out of the truck. It's a wonderful idea, said Miss Watson. Now, Stella, run next door and invite Eugenia and Baby to our small celebration. Tell them it is in honor of... Mr. Watson turned to Francine. What is your name, my dear? My name is Animal Control Officer Francine Pollute, said Francine. And I've been trying to think like a pig. Well, said Mr. Watson, not just anybody can think like a pig. Not just anybody can be, be a wonder. I guess not, said Francine. You keep trying, dear, said Miss Watson. In the meantime, let's all go have some toast. The end.